up. I'm no one and nobody, and I'm coming to do a sermon. All right? Here's what you can expect to see in the sermon. It'll be an introduction, it'll be a reading of scripture, it'll be prayer, I will teach the scripture, I'll give an invitation to Christ, and I'll do my makeshift version of donations. Sermon is titled The Manifestation of Christ. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're going to start off with the sermon text. Uh, it can be the first verse, there's four verses that this whole sermon is based on. So I'm just going to dive right into it, read all four verses, and, and we're going right in. Okay? Alright. First verse comes from John chapter 14, verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is Jesus speaking. The next text comes a few verses later. John chapter 14, verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Last but not least, the last verse comes from Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Jesus speaking still. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Uh, by the way, that first from uh, Corinthians, there was Apostle Paul, Paul was Jesus. All right? I like to open with this statement. One day I was on my room, one day recently, I was on my room, on my knees, praying because I'm in a broken internal state. For whatever reason, that's where I am in life. I was on my knees praying to God and seeking Him. Desperately. And this came to me, a proverb, if you will, okay? It is better to be happy in suffering within the will of God than it is to be miserable and pleased by the kingdom of darkness. I'll repeat this one more time. It is better to be happy in suffering within the will of God than it is to be miserable and pleased by the kingdom of darkness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are everything. I am nothing and I am nobody. I glorify your name, lift you high over everything. I pray and ask, Father, that you will guide me by your Holy Spirit of truth that comes forth from you, Father, into all truth. I pray, Lord, that you will Cover me in the blood of Christ, Father, who came forth from you, that I may walk the path of righteousness. I pray, Father, that you will guide me, protect me, and strengthen me with your mighty hand, as you are all powerful, Father. Give me a word to give to your sheep, Lord. And we'll be sure to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Richard Ross has got to die. I repeat, Richard Ross, that's me, has got to die.
Why does Richard Ross have to die? Richard Ross has to die so that Christ can live in me. I'll repeat it again. Richard Ross has to die so that Christ can live in me. Now somebody is saying, why does it got to be about you? And I'll explain that. Because it ain't about me, right? It's about God. It's about the kingdom of heaven. It's about Christ. All right? It's not about me. But for me to understand things, I have to make it about me because I've been so selfish my whole life without even knowing. I've been so selfish that I am unable to process information unless I make it about myself. So if I said, you have to die so that Christ lives in you, I wouldn't understand it. It don't hit home like that. For me to make it hit home, I got to make it about me. I have to die so that Christ can live in me. And I understand if you don't like that. So I want you to make it about yourself. Whatever you hear me say, Richard Ross, you insert your name. Because I ain't nothing and I'm nobody. Right? But this applies to mankind. This, this sermon does. Alright? Luke chapter 14, verses 26 through 27. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, his wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. This is what Christ says. And the interpretation of this verse is anything that you may love more than Christ makes you unworthy to be his disciple. Period. If something happens to your mother, if something happens to your father, if something happens between you and your spouse, if something happens with your children, if something in your own life that, 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 that affects you so much that it will separate you from wanting to be in God's will, you are not worthy of being Christ's disciples. You have to be willing to forsake all things. Did it mess up? You have to be willing to forsake all things for the sake of Christ. Alright? So how do I kill Richard Ross? There's only one way to kill him. Alright? There's only one way to kill him. The only way I can kill Richard Ross is by keeping the commandments of Christ. It's the only way. He'll keep on coming back. He'll keep on coming back. Every morning I wake up and look in the mirror and dang! There you go again, right? All of my pride, all of my ego. That's what I'm talking about when I'm referring to Richard Ross. I'm talking about pride. I'm talking about arrogance. I'm talking about iniquity, selfishness. All of these things separate me from God, right? All right? So I kill that. I kill Richard Ross by keeping Christ's commandments. So what are Christ's commandments? This is a great start. This is a great start on the walk with, all right? The first commandment is the greatest commandment. To love God with all your mind, heart, and soul, strength. Love God. That's the, that's the greatest commandment. The second greatest commandment is life. To love your neighbor. This is the second greatest commandment, right? To love your neighbor as yourself, right? And I understand some people got deep problems and they don't even love themselves. I know I could hardly, I could hardly live with myself. Trust me, I get it. Sometimes you can't, it's hard to love yourself when you look at yourself through the lens of truth. Sometimes it can be hard, but nevertheless, love your neighbor as you love yourself, all right? All right? And I'm going to give up. Uh, the, the golden, the golden rule, as is often times referred to. All right. Treat people how.
how you want to be treated. This is so powerful and it's so hard, right? Here's the thing. I am very easily offended, okay? It don't take much for you to get on my, you know, crap list, all right? I pick up on the slightest hint of disrespect, okay? So if I don't want nobody to disrespect me, right, I, I best not be disrespecting nobody type of thing. And it's a very simple concept, but I'm telling you, it becomes elusive once you encounter difficult situations, once, once, once you encounter people that you feel deserve to be treated poorly, right? But once you come to the place where you feel like another human being deserves to be treated poorly, you just made yourself out to be a judge. Christ said, don't judge unless you be judged type of deal. Um, Alright, this is the big three. Uh, there's a lot of, Christ has a lot of commandments. If you do a Google search of Christ's commandments, it'll pull up a list of like 49 of them, right? And it's a good idea to try to practice keeping all of them type of deal. Alright? It'll work out in our best entries. Alright? I'll name a few of them. A few of other Christ's other commandments. Repent. Let your light shine, Christ commands us to do. Do not lust. Love your enemies. Seek first the kingdom of God. Ooh, that's the power. And all this righteousness and all these things will be given to you. That's what Christ is telling us don't worry. He's saying don't judge. I was just talking about that. Don't fear. Take Christ's yoke upon you. If you were to take Christ's yoke upon you, you will be taking off the yoke of sin and putting on Christ's yoke. That's deep. That's a whole, that's a whole series of sermons. Deny yourself. Mm. What's that? Luke 9, 23. If any man come after me, let him deny himself daily, take up his cross, and follow me. Christ Christ the man. Alright. So what does keeping Christ's commandments actually accomplish? Alright. Narrow is the path that leads to righteousness, and there are few who find it. But broad is the path that leads to death. And everybody going that way. The scripture. Okay? I like path. It helps me understand, you know, path is, you know. A path, a path is, you know, a path that you walk like a sidewalk or something like this. I like to use train. I like to use train because a train runs on a track. A train runs on a track that, make, that makes predetermined stops at predetermined destinations, right? Type of deal. So, 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 so I like to use track. Let's, let's, let's make this thing into a train ride. Let's make this walk with Christ into a train ride, all right? There are many trains that we can get on that take us many places, but there's only one train that leads to abundant life, right? And that's keeping Christ's commandments, okay? What are other trains that you may get on, okay? Uh, the love of self, that's a train. And it's a very tricky train, because you're supposed to love yourself. It, it's saying you love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? But love of self, that cannot overpower your love for Christ. That cannot be greater than your love for Christ. If it is, you didn't accidentally got on the wrong train and you headed to a place that you not necessarily want to go, right? The love of money, that's another train. But am I supposed to make money? Don't, don't I supposed to make enough money to take care of my family? You know, you can rob, steal, and kill to get money. Huh? Once, once, once your love for money overrules your love for Christ, you ain't got on the wrong train. Huh? A lot of relationships are based on love. This whole corona thing that then broke out, we about to fall into a depression most likely. And a lot of people that base their marriages on the love of money. I'm with them because they got that bag, right? But once that bag gone, what's left? The foundation of the whole marriage is corrupt, and it'll be exposed. That's not what this sermon is about, though. All right? The love of pleasure. That's another train you can get on that's taking you somewhere that you don't want to go. 
Oh, I'm with this person because they put, because they make me feel good, because it's all rainbows and lollipops. This is what I desire in my flesh. But what happens when the pleasure gets taken away? When you put in some unpleasant situations, there's no foundation to stand upon, and it'll fall. Right? These are all different trains you can get on, different paths in life you can walk that are contrary to Christ's commandments. Right? It's real scary that it's possible to be on the wrong train, going to the wrong place, and you think that you're on the right train, going to the right place. It takes revelation to, to, to get you out. Sometimes it takes you to be broken down to get you up off of that train. So sometimes you about got to thank God for trials and tribulation. It's him saving you, all right? Proverbs 14, 12. There's a way that seems right to a man, but his end is the way of death. Mm. Scared. I done been them ways before. Luke 10, 10. The thief does not come except to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. This is what Christ says. Okay? Any of them other trends that you want to get on, as desirable as it may be, money, pleasure, self, all of that, they don't lead to abundant life. Alright? The enemy only came to kill, steal, and destroy. That's Luke 10, 10. I'm going to tell you where to remember this verse. It's a song by Genuine. Title, so anxious. He said, It's 10 10. Where you been? Did you get my message? Your old expression is telling me that you've been thinking up. Somebody said the same thing. Right? Let's put 8 baby. You ain't 8 baby. You might not know that song. Group 10 10. Funny way I remember. Back on subject. If keeping Christ's commandments is a train, then what's the first stop? I use spoiler alert. It's three stops. This, make, this train is making three stops. And if you stay on that straight and narrow, whoo, you're going straight to heaven. The first stop. I love Christ. That's the first stop that we're going to make. Okay? What does it look like at this stop? Alright? What does it look like to love Christ? Alright? A very vivid description of what it looks like to love Christ is to hate evil. You cannot simultaneously practice evil and love Christ. I'm going to say it again. You cannot simultaneously practice evil and love Christ. You can't do those things at the same time. If you practice an evil, you actually hate Christ, right? If you love Christ, then you hate evil. They're contrary to each other. The love of Christ is to hate evil. John chapter 3, verse 19. This is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Alright, first stop we already hit, we love Christ. What's the second stop? God loves me. This is the second stop. Alright, so to keep Christ commandments, it creates like a domino effect. Once you love Christ, it's going to be a domino effect. Once you love Christ, God automatically loves you, and the next one automatically happens too, right? But I'm breaking them down into stops so that we can observe each one individually and see what happens at the stop, alright? So God loves me. Let's see what this looks like.
John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is what Jesus said. There's a lot of religions out there. There's a lot of religions out there. A lot of different ways of life. When they say, this is the path to God. Oh no, this is the path to God. Some of them say, all of them are a path to God. But what Christ said out his own mouth is there's only one path to God, and that's through him. I was looking at some videos online, you know. That's all I really watch is uh, Bible content, Bible content, YouTube videos, sermons. That's, that's what I do. That's my thing. I watch sports. I watch basketball, football. But if it ain't that, I'm watching Bible content. And this is one cat. He was a... He's a recovered Satanist that's now a Christian representing the kingdom of heaven. I don't support all of his doctrine, um, but he said something that I found to be profound. All right? He said that Satan can never love you. A lot of these Satanists think that Satan loves them. But he said Satan can never love you. This is a revelation you received once he came to Christ. He said Satan can never love you because he hates God. And you was made in the image of God. So how are you going to love you? He hates you. He hates God. So wow, God loves me. So now what's this third stop? The third stop is... is Jesus manifest himself to them. So check this out. When I am loved by God, and because I am loved by God, Jesus will manifest himself to me. Now there are prerequisites. God ain't just, okay, yeah, God loves us, generally speaking. That's why he sent his son to the world. God so loved the world, he gave his only God son, right? Okay, cool. But, he gave his son so that you can love him. Okay? If you want to skip the part of God provide his son to shed his blood for you so that you can have access to him, then you can forget about getting to the part where God loves you intimately. When you wash in the blood of Christ and he doesn't see your sin, he sees the love of Christ on type of thing. Alright? Man, we want to come to God on our own terms and our own standards. And we want to give God our rules and regulations on how to serve Him and have a relationship with Him. Right? And yeah, that's cool. And we think we got a relationship with Him. But in reality, Christ's going to be like, depart from me. I never knew you. That first step is essential. Alright? So when I'm loved by God, because I am loved by God, Jesus will now manifest himself to me. So what does manifest actually mean? The best definition I can use of manifest is a display, right? When a young man or older man decides that he wants to marry a woman, he'll go to a jewelry store and he'll look at the display of wedding rings and he says, hmm, oh, okay, I have this much money so I can only look at these. Those is too much. I'm going to look at these and I'll pick that one. I think that one will make her say yes type of deal, right? Because the wedding, the, the engagement rings are in a display where he can see them, the assortment thereof. Alright? Alright? Okay? Alright? So, uh, uh, what's it called? Let's pause on this wedding thing, right? I want to work this thing a little bit, this whole wedding ring thing. Alright? Alright? Be cautious when making that proposal. When uh, find when 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 you want to when a man wants to propose to a woman, he ought to be cautious. Okay, since the beginning of time, since the Garden of Eden, Satan has been breaking up families and and leveraging the man over the woman and, and altering the natural state of the family, right, to attack as a spiritual attack on the kingdom of heaven. 
It pleases Satan to destroy your family. Sometimes you got to fight for your family, right? So when a man goes to propose to a woman, he ought to be sure that she's ready to engage in spiritual warfare. God set up family. God is a God of order. He set family up orderly, just like he is orderly. God is the, the, the overseer. God the Father is the head of the Trinity. Underneath him is the Son. The Son glorifies the Father. Underneath Christ is the Holy Spirit. So it's God, it's the Son, Christ, and it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit glorifies Christ. Christ glorifies the Father, right? The family is set up in the same way, okay? The children ought to honor the parents. I mean, ought, ought to honor the mother, both parents. The children honor the mother. The mother honors the father. That's how God set that thing up. When Satan will come in, he'll try to put the kids on top. Oh, he can't put the woman. I mean, he can't put the kids. I uh, didn't know oh, he put the woman on top. The woman made the money, now she called the shot. She can't listen to the man no more. Boom, boom, boom. You just took God's covenant off of your family. The covering and the protection. Be cautious. This spiritual warfare. So if God can't, excuse me, if Satan can't attack the man because he's walking too straight, he'll attack the wife and the children to get to the man. If he can't attack the woman, he'll attack the men and the children to get to the woman. Type of thing. He'll go after whatever it takes to break the family down. Right? The family got to be ready to engage in the spiritual warfare. That's not what this sermon is about. But let's move on. How will Jesus manifest? and display himself to me, Richard Ross, okay? So though Richard Ross lives, I deliver myself to death. How? This is quiz time. How does Richard Ross deliver himself to death? I already said it. By keeping Christ's commands. Big three. All right? And because I die in my flesh by keeping Christ's commandments always. This ain't like a notch in the belt. Oh, I kept Christ's commandments. We're there, we arrived. Hey, welcome to party. No, it's a way of life. So because I keep Christ's commandments always, Christ will manifest himself to me always. I deliver myself to death always by keeping Christ's commandments always so Christ can manifest himself to me always. So how does Christ manifest himself to me? Because I died in my flesh. Now Jesus manifests himself in my flesh. So I ain't even here no more. All of my pride, all of my arrogance, all of the mistakes that I made, that's what it means to be Born again, you have laid down the old way of life, right? You covered in the blood of Christ. Now you are a new creation. If you have the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of truth, you ought to walk in step with the Spirit of truth. How are you going to have the Holy Spirit of truth and go around lying and go around women to be lied to, right? Once you taste the truth, what dealings do you want to have with deception? So what does it look like when Jesus displays himself in my body? So first off, Jesus didn't come by himself. He brought somebody with him. When Jesus manifests himself to me, when Jesus manifests himself in me, he didn't come by himself. Right? Because I keep Christ's commandments. I love Christ. Because I love Christ, I'm loved by God. Because I'm loved by God and I'm dead to myself, Christ said, God says, okay, Christ, you see him, Richard Ross? Now he's keeping your commands always. Go live in him, Christ. Let your light shine to the world through him. And Christ says, really, Dad? And, and God said, yeah. And Christ says, will you come with me? And God said, all right, come on. And they both come and live in me. So, so, so I'm dead to myself, right? 
But, but when I lived for Christ, I thought I was strong, but no, I was weak. Me, me as an individual, I'm a dead man, but because Christ and God now lives in me, I have holy strength, right? And I walk around with all of these protections, all of these promises that God has made me. Christ says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, ask for anything in my name and my Father will give it to you. So I would like to give an introduction into spiritual warfare. Now we know how it is that Christ will display himself in our flesh. Now it's time for war. All right? But, 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 I got to give you a briefing on what's going down. All right? There was a war in heaven. Okay? Uh, God created Satan. He's a created being just like mankind is a human created being. Satan was an angel. There was a war in heaven. Satan used to be one of the most beautiful angels. It's rumored that he was one of the, they call him the, uh, uh, the, the cherubim that covers, right? So it's, it's, it, was, it was a few angels that covered the throne of God in heaven. And Satan was rumored to be one of them, right? But Satan decided that he would be more powerful than God. That he would be higher than God. That he raised his throne above God's throne. So he convinced a third of the angels to turn on God, and they got kicked out of heaven, cast down to earth. God created man and put him in the Garden of Eden, okay, and told him not to eat of the forbidden fruit. Or the day he eat of it, he would surely die. Satan tricked mankind into eating of the fruit, okay, and brought a curse upon himself. And the curse that Satan brought upon himself is that, I read it word for word, all right, Alright, the, the, the curse that Satan put upon is Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is the curse that God gave to Satan. He said, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So, 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 this is referring to Christ on Calvary. When Christ died on the cross redeeming mankind for the, uh, redeeming them, uh, from death, shed his blood for their sins. He stumped Satan head. He, uh, he stumped Satan. He stumped him so bad that he bruised his head. You ever stumped so, something so hard you hurt your heel? Okay, that's how Christ bruised his heel. And when Christ returns to rule for the millennium, he gonna, uh, he gonna crush Satan's head. Okay? All uh, right. So here's Satan's dominion. A lot of people don't know this. Satan has dominion over the earth for a time, for a short time. All right, his ruling is short, but while he rules, he rules his earth. All of the systems on, in place on earth are under his control. Money, the legal system, the healthcare system, all of them are under his control, okay? Satan's kingdom is referred to as the kingdom of darkness. All right, there are ranks of demons that go about doing Satan's bids. Okay, Satan's goal is to see, to deceive, and devour mankind to receive glory and worship from man and to oppose Christ. But he is restricted. If you read the book of Job, it don't take long in the book of Job, in chapter one, that you come to find out that Satan has to report to God. Okay, all right, Satan reports to God to accuse man. All right, and Satan may or may not get permission from God to cause harm or for the kingdom of darkness to cause harm. That's how he did it. All right, he can only Satan can only operate within the restrictions that God has set in place for him. Now, if Satan or any of the demons become too unruly and decide to operate outside of the restrictions set in place for them, God will take them and throw them into the abyss which is a place that they can't escape from until the day of judgment. And that's not something that they want to do. They'd rather be harassing me and you until then. So they're going to stay in order, all right? The kingdom of heaven has already triumphed over the kingdom of darkness. When Christ died on the cross, he said it is finished, 
All right? That's how to do it. Okay? So it's not like it's a continuous battle between good and evil. No. When Christ comes down and manifests himself in us and walks the earth in our flesh, right? This is a victory lap. This is Christ shining the light in the darkness that he already overcame and already triumphed over. It's the victory lap. Like when a, when a, when a team win, win, a, win a championship game, a Super Bowl, and they walk, they march around the city with it. This is a victory lap Christ living in us. Type of thing. All right? All right? Christ sits at the right hand of God in heaven, victorious, having overcome Satan and the world, redeeming mankind with his own blood, shares the ultimate sacrifice, rising from the dead and ascending to heaven. Okay. But we have to take caution. Okay? Because once Christ lives in us and we are shining our light into the world, okay, we become a target, a, a priority target of the kingdom of darkness. They like, man, we got to get this fool. He's doing too much damage. So this is what it looks like. When you keep Christ's commandments and you do things like you love your enemy, right? When you do things like go the extra mile and do good to those who persecute you, type of things like this, you are pushing back the gates of the kingdom of darkness. You are pushing back the gates of hell. The kingdom of darkness don't like that. So they try to beckon you outside of your protection. They try to trick you and deceive you into, into coming out of alignment with God's will, right? Because once you enter into sin, you are no longer indwelled by Christ. The Holy Spirit will depart from you. Christ, Christ man, look here. Just like Christ say, uh, uh, what you call him? All right, look. If you abandon Christ's commandments and go after the love of self, the love of money, the love of pleasure, Satan will kill you even worse. What's even worse than being killed? Being bound by him to do his will. Okay? But I, I just want to say something here and give my testimony, if you will. Okay? I done a lot of backsliding in my day. I done a lot of walking with Christ. Not walking with Christ. Walking with Christ. Not walking with Christ. This is why Christ said, if you don't love me more than your mother, father, wife, you know, and all these things, you can't be my disciple, right? Because you're going to be way too vulnerable after you step outside of God's will and you will be attacked by the kingdom of darkness. Christ wants you to either be hot or be cold. You can't be wishy-washy in the middle, right? All right? And that's why I fell at being too wishy-washy, right? The last time I stepped outside of God's will, man, I, I nearly lost my life. And I just want to give a warning to anyone that's, that's not serious about this. If you're not serious about really voting for Christ, I recommend not doing it because, man, the kingdom of darkness will not have mercy on you. It ain't taking no prison type of thing, right? But be of good cheer. The world is evil. Christ has already overcome the world. There's no sadness. There's no hurt. There's no pain, no insecurity, no broken heart, no fear, no evil that Christ cannot overcome. Right? Behold, Christ has all power in his hands. And he stands at the door and knocks. Will you let him into your life? That's my invitation to Christ. Okay? Alright, this concludes my sermon. Okay? Now, donations. If you like to donate, hire me to do some work. I am a carpenter. I will build whatever you want to build. I'll finish your basement. I'll build you a deck. I'll build you a fence. Right? Renovate your home. Home is whatever stuff you need to do. I have a lawn care business. I mow the grass, $40 front and back, mow, trim, blow. Hire me. Call me up. I serve the west suburbs. I fix cars. 
I'll do your oil change. I'll give you a tune-up. I'll do your brakes. I'll, 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 I'll change your head gas. Whatever you need done with the vehicle, I can do that too. So if you'd like to donate, hit me up. Oh, landscaping. I do landscaping. I got landscaping pages. Link to my Facebook. Check this out. If you'd like to get up. Or if you really real, you just want to give me some money. Hey, shoot. Hey, look. You send it to me. Chase a quick page there. Link to my phone number, 630-881-1803. But I'll be honest, I'd much rather work for my money. So, uh, hire me. Work. Or if y'all don't like none of them options, get some money to the poor. Get some money to somebody that need it, man. This corona out here destroying people. It's families falling apart. Man, look. So if you got it, you know somebody that need it, man, give it to them for my sake. Because if I had no abundance, that's what I'd be doing with it. But I ain't got no more abundance. You guys still good, though. All right, that concludes the message. God bless. Love y'all. Take care. Peace.